Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day, hope you are all having an amazing day today. My name is Lex and welcome back to some more GTA 5 where today we're going to be looking at a brand new lure friendly vehicle for GTA 5 and it is this that I'm driving right now. This is the Anis Requiem Z, I think it's called the Requiem, it's a very weird looking name and here it is. Look. At this, let me just uh, try and find a badge with the name on it so we can try and read this. Requiem? 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 I don't know how exactly this is. Oh, okay, I'm being carjacked. No, 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 no. Wait, what? They're just beating me up. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, I didn't even need the gun. <laughs> just hit him with a gun. That's, that's the best way to use a gun, I guess, is to hit someone with it. So you might recognize the model of this car for any of you that have played Mafia 3. This is actually a Mafia 3 car that has been pulled out of Mafia 3 and has been adapted to fit inside a GTA 5 with the right, you know, interiors and working everything, doors, windows, and, you know, the right badging as well because this is sort of like a, like a Nissan 240Z. And that is why this is the Anis. It's sort of like a, a 240Z. I'm trying to think of what other, it also looks like a British sports car in a certain way as well from certain angles. Um, but it, it's definitely a combination of maybe like a, an old MG and a Nissan 240Z. And there's also loads of tuning parts for this car as well. So of course we're going to be tuning this car up and checking it all out and seeing what sort of cool builds we can make. But before we do all of that, there's going to be some comments on the screen. These are comments featured from the previous video. If you would like your comments featured, you can leave them in the comment section below. I'll pick some at random and feature them at the start of the next video. And don't forget, you can also follow me on Twitter at figure eight. Links for my Twitter are in the description below. So let me just park up right here. And first things first, as I didn't do this last time I parked here, is we've got to kill this guy. And I guess I'm going to try and hit him with my gun again. Yeah, there we go. That's a better way to use a gun. <laughs> That's my new favorite way, just use a gun as a blunt force weapon. And actually, thinking about it, I'm right next to this really busy road. I should probably find somewhere else to park. Okay, right in the middle of the car park is going to be fine. That just gets rid of some of the noise from the road. Oh god, now we've got sirens. Okay, I'll probably just turn down the game audio. So here we are with the Requiem Z. Very nice looking. Loads of car parts to be checking out with this thing. I'm also going to probably do a little bit of stance with this. Not entirely sure how these builds are going to turn out, so we'll just have to see what sort of parts are available. So there is the exterior. Let's just go ahead and open up the bonnet and the boot as well. Okay, with the bonnet open, and look at this beautiful 3D engine. Oh, that just looks so nice in there. I love how that looks. Looks like a single overhead cam, six-cylinder with a carb. That is, that is a cool-looking engine. I like that. If I've got that six-cylinder wrong... Let me know <laughs> But that's that's what I'm assuming but of course as we all know I'm not exactly the greatest when it comes to engine knowledge But that does look awesome and old-school and just fits this car so nicely And then we have the boot as well nice and simple all this bit around the side isn't carpet tears that just like the old classic style with this sort of like rubbery looking base on the boot there oh, Awesome, and I love that little boot lid because it's got that little curve on it it just looks really nice when it's sticking up for some reason. I don't know why. And then on to the interior. I guess we should probably get Michael to jump out for this one so we can see it a bit better. And here we are in the interior. All wooden, all classic, all awesome looking with this nice gated shift here. And this huge steering wheel. Nice wooden steering wheel with the chrome uh, rims? Chrome spokes? Spokes are the words. That's what I'm thinking of. Chrome spokes. And yeah, just a nice classic interior with also a nice bit of modern twist with these seats I guess very nice this is a very good looking car I've got to say just fits in really nice as a classic car inside the GTA universe so of course this is actually made by the team that brings you the vanilla works extended mod pack which means you'll probably be seeing it inside the mod pack very soon currently it's just a sort of single mod uh, but I imagine it will be added relatively soon and actually just going through the list of people who worked on this, DA7K did the model edit to make it all fit inside of GTA 5 and also added loads of new tuning parts. Carrie THXD, or is it Carrie Thanks D? You're going to have to let me know how to pronounce that. Uh, turned it into an add-on mod. Johnny36000 did the handling and the description. Grumples did the Requiem Z logo. That would be that one right there. And Boywand did the livery and texture edits because there are some cool liveries 
for this as well. So let's just jump in and start modifying this thing. So let's just get Michael back in the car. Let's bring up menus mod, vehicle options, menus customs, and well, let's go. So we'll start with the spoiler. So we have the standard sort of like little bit of a lip going on there. This is part of the body design. Then we have the race spoiler. As we can see right there, that's not too bad. That's not too crazy. Remembering that this is a Japanese car, so a lot of these tuning things are going to be Japanese car style tuning related. Uh, and then we have, of course, a ducktail spoiler. Just a nice little one. Oh, it's got some badges on it as well. Anis badging and the Requiem Z badging there on the right. That does look nice. That has just got a really cool classic look to it. But I also will admit that I, I don't mind this race spoiler. It does look very similar to the one that you'd get on like the Hakuska Skyline GTR. So it just sort of fits. But for this one, I, I'm going to do like a couple of builds, I imagine, on this one. I'm not just going to do the one. I'm just going to go for the ducktail spoiler first of all, because I just think it looks really nice. I, I just like the idea of a classic look for this first one. Then on to the front bumper, and we have the stock front bumper, just this nice, simple chrome bumper. Then we have the sturdy bumper, just the more classic one, which almost, probably I'd say that this one looks more like a stock bumper. This one looks like the clean, nice modified version, but there's the sturdy one with these big bulbous bits, whatever they are. I'm not really entirely sure, just big bits on the bumper. Then we have, whoa, the custom bumper, which definitely makes it look a bit more like um, a British sports car in a way. For some reason, I'm getting like an MG vibe from this, but I don't know. You guys can decide that, but that's a real proper new bumper for this one. Then we have the race bumper, which is just a sort of smoother version of that, not as bulbous with um, just these holes right there. Then we have the street bumper. Wow, there's quite a lot of cool. These, these are all like brand new designs. The DA7K has made as well. Or is it DA7K? Oh, God. I'm sorry if I get the names wrong. And then we have the Safari Bull Bars and Lights. Oh, now that is a cool classic look. Because that gets rid of the bumpers as well. Oh, I like that. I like that. But I'm not... Oh, it's also got this bit here as well. Just notice it's got this framing on the exterior right there as well. I am not sure what to do, because I was going to go for a classic look, which sort of takes out pretty much all of these right here, and just leaves us with these two. And I guess we should probably go for a bit more of a substantial change with this one. So I'm, I'm actually going to go back to the spoiler, go for the race spoiler, and then on the front bumper, I'm just going to go for something like the race bumper. Maybe we'll make this into like a full race car, and then I'll probably do like my one that I'd like to do it in real life as my second uh, build. So we'll go for that one. First of all, then we go for the rear bumper. We have the stock. Nice classic. We want to try and get away from that. So we have the tow hook version of the classic. Then we have the Suikawa. This is the uh, subway pull ring thing, the uh, grab handles. Then we have the sturdy bumper to go with the classic one that we had on the front. The nice uh, classic sturdy bumper style. And then we have the custom bumper. Interesting. Okay, so that's actually got a lot more of a bulbous look than this one does now because the race one sort of like cuts that down a little bit. But yeah, I guess I'm not. <laughs> I'm suddenly really unsure because I'm definitely not into this look. Maybe it'll work really well with the liveries. So maybe we'll actually go for the race car look. And But at the moment, it just looks kind of weird to have that bumper because I'm just so into this sort of classic bumper look. Uh, but we'll go with this and we'll see how it goes. And then the side skirts, we have one option, which is obviously just the matching side skirts for the rest of the kit there. This is very, this is definitely a very unique style and look. Then on the exhaust, this is probably going to fill up that massive huge hole we've got here. So we have the stock. Then we have the twin exhaust. See, that fills it up a lot better. Then we have the tuna exhaust with the uh, titanium tip. We have the big bore exhaust, titanium tip, the Shakatan exhaust. Oh my god. We can even have that. But again, this this definitely not like a you know a Bosozoku style kit or anything. So maybe this yeah, I don't think those exhausts are gonna fit in this build. And then we have the dual shotgun, which doesn't work with this bumper. So I'm gonna go with the twin exhaust. Then onto the chassis. This is gonna be the roll cage. Let's get a nice view of the interior right here. And there's the roll cage, nice and chrome looking, all the way on the back and through to the front, all the way down there in the footwell. That's nice, I'll go for that, seems we're going for the race car build. Onto the grill, and I've got to say that actually I was on the Discord for the uh, Vanilla Works Extended Discord when this was being made and DA7K asked for some ideas, 
and I believe one of these was the one that I said as an idea, so that's pretty cool. Even I'm not really going to take credit of being help, because it's really just, you know, a simple idea that he probably would have come up with anyway, but interesting factoid for you. So there's the stock grill. Then we have the classic grill. This is the one that I recommended. I just thought it would be really nice to have this nice sort of no badge or anything. Mind you, there's no badge on that one. I mean just like a simple vertical star one, just nice classic look. And also sort of goes with the sort of British um, sports car styling that's slightly there in this one, even though it is definitely more Japanese dominated. Uh, I just thought it was a nice idea. I think it works. Then we have the custom grill going all the way around. So slightly different. This one actually goes the whole way across in the horizontal style, so sort of like similar to the stock actually, just less grills. That does look nice though. We might go with that one for the racing one, unless the black grill fits better. Oh, maybe it does actually. Yeah, that is the black version of the stock grill, and I think we're going to go for that one. So we're going to go for a bit less chrome, seems like it's a race car. That works. Let's go for that. Then onto the hood, we have just the hood pins. As it's a race car, I guess they're going to fit, so we'll go for those. Then onto the fenders. This is where it's getting interesting. We have the stock fenders. The street fenders. Ooh, okay. This is where we're going to have to get v Stancer out to fit these wheels into these arches because it's going to look a little bit lost in there. Then we have the turbo hair fenders, which are even bigger. Oh my god, these things are big. Then we have the race fenders. Oh, now see, now they go with this bumper and everything. That is cool. I think we're going to have to go for those, the race fenders. And then we also have the vintage splitter, which doesn't really work with this bumper. So we'll have to look at that in the next build. But yeah, I think the race fenders are going to work with this kit. And actually, I'm realizing that this kit doesn't really work with the custom skirt either. It sort of just cuts away and there's a gap at the bottom. So I'm actually going to get rid of the skirts for this one and just have the kit at the front and the back. Although you can actually just get rid of everything because this arch just works really well with the stock body lines. But yeah, I guess we'll just go back for the custom bumper for this build anyway. Okay, so the next set of fenders appears to be things that aren't really going to work with this bumper, as you can see right there. So we're going to ignore those for this build and we'll check them out in the next one, uh, which is obviously going to be my favorite build because this is I'm not really entirely sure about the way this is going at the moment, but I'm, st I'm still just giving it a chance. And then we have some rear louvers on the back. Oh, that is cool. That is cool. Always a big fan of louvers, but not for this build. Not for the race build. I'm going to use that on the classic build. And then we have engine, brakes, transmission. See what the sort of suspension drops we can get. So we have lowered, street, sport, competition. Not too crazy, but a little bit of a drop there. So we'll go with the competition suspension. And then we just have paints and everything else. What have we got in extras here? We've got extra three, which is actually the plate for the front bumper. But it looks so much better without it. And it's supposed to be a race car, so we won't go with that. Let's go for a turbo added on here. And this is fine. In fact, I'm not going to check out the paint just yet. Because we've got the livery still to go. And also a few more extra parts. So actually, we'll leave the engine and stuff till last. We've got arch covers, which is taped headlights. Ah, see, now they're going to work as it's a race car, so... I'm going to go for those. Then we have aerials. These are going to be more fog lights. Oh, hood mounted fog lights or grill mounted fog lights. This is definitely a very strange look. I feel like they sort of fit in with this actually with this race car build. Although they, they would work actually equally well with a classic build. So I'm not entirely sure. But I guess as we're just adding parts to this for this first one. Uh, and then we'll be a bit more serious with the second one. I'm going to go for it. Then on the liveries, we have the options of Turbo R Black on the bottom there. Oh, that looks very almost like Porsche style. I do like that. Then we have the Turbo R in white and special colors. Very sort of uh, 70s looking. Also slightly 80s looking. Then we have Benny's white, just original motorsport Benny's there. And then we have the same in black and gold. Then we have the Retro Racer, which I think might go well with a white color. We might try that in a second. Then we have the Safari, and I think this one is going to look really nice with the classic look with the fog lights and the like the Safari ball bars and stuff. Might have to do that as my next build, actually. Because that is a very nice old school style, just an old school rally livery look with this, which is sort of like uh, the Rally de Palito San Andreas. Oh, of course, because it is law friendly. But yeah, that's supposed to be like the, um, like the Paridaka, perhaps, or the Le Mans or something like that. Very cool. 
Very cool. Then we have the Chappelle Racing one. Definitely a little bit more modern looking. Actually, no, it's not really modern looking. That's quite an old style font. Quite 70s vibes off this, actually. Yeah, very vibrant in color. Definitely doesn't go with the stock orange. We might have to try this with a white and have a look at these. And then we have the Derelict, which just makes everything look old and rusty. So for this one, I'm going to go for the Retro Racer, I think. And we're going to try and make the paint color white. Uh, we do also have the engine stuff. I haven't forgotten. We'll check those out in just a second. I'm just doing this in a sort of weird order for some reason. I'm not entirely sure. And here we go. Classic white. Oh, that's very bright, but... That does look nice. I wonder if there's any other colors that work well with this. Nah, not really feeling any of those colors. So, Frost White is a winner right there. Let's just try out the other livery as well. Just want to see how that looks with the white instead of the horrible orange that we had. That actually, in fact, I'm actually going to go for that one as I really like how that looks with the white. Yeah, there we go. There's the racing one. So now we just got to go for wheels and... A little bit of uh, V stancer just so we can get the wheels sitting a bit better in the arches and also the engine tuning. So let's go ahead and do that first before we start forgetting about it. So we have the engine block, so we have the stock, then we have the retro cam cover. Ooh, that's cool. And then we have the performance cam cover. Is this a dual overhead cam? I feel like it might be a dual when I've just been stupid saying it was a single overhead cam. Uh, I don't know, but. I actually really like how that looks with the stock one, but as this is supposed to be a racer, I guess performance cam is going to be the winner. And then we also have for the air filters, not actually air filters, we have the twin turbo setup. Oh my god. And we also have the side draft carburetors. Ooh, look at that. Independent throttle bodies. That is nice. I do love that. But uh, actually, as this is a classic racer, I guess these are the winner. Because probably back in the day, you wouldn't have had twin turbo setups. That's quite a modern thing. So, side draft carburetors, it is. Okay, onto the wheels. And this might be troublesome for us to find some old style wheels. Because I have got the Law Friendly Wheels mod on. But it's a lot of it is quite modern looking. Although some of this has got some old style to it, I guess. Yeah, I guess some of these can work. In fact, that actually looks really nice. We'll go for that, I think. We might even try with a white wheel. And what about red? Okay, the red's an interesting look. We might have to move the car just a little bit for the sun because it's sort of, you can't really see the wheels that nicely. There we go, that's better. Yeah, I think the red wheels look really nice. And then it's just a case of using v Stancer, to go to the suspension menu. And I'm just really just gonna knock them out, really. I just wanna use the track width and bring them out like that. That works. And then the same on the front. And that's pretty much it. I mean, I know that when you turn it, it's going to look a little bit wrong. And you probably, yeah, it's slightly, we might have to actually, it's going to be a little bit less height there. Yeah, there we go. And maybe just slightly less on the front. Yeah, there we are. There it is. There is the racing version. And also, I've just noticed with this livery, it's also got this nice black surround on the lights. I like how that looks, actually. And there we are. There is our first build, the racer. But, do you know what? I want to do two more builds. I want to do one Safari. If I actually, oh my god, I want to do three. I want to do a Safari, a rat, and the cool classic look that I would like to have in real life. So, what I'm actually going to do is, instead of showing you all these builds, I'm going to just breeze through them. So, let's go. Okay, so whilst we've got the car nice and stock, and can I just say instantly that it's an interesting look, this sort of old school racer, but, oh, this classic look is just so nice. It is just, I've, I've got a nice, a new appreciation for the stock look of this car after looking at that one with the kit. It's beautiful and simplistic, and I love it. So, before we actually get into anything else, I just want to quickly check out those extra parts that we couldn't see before because of those big bumpers. So, first of all, we had, what was it? We also had these race fenders because we couldn't see this bit on the front. That does look nice. These ones only had the bits on the side, but there is actually another full race kit that we could have gone for and had a nice classic racer look. Ah, actually they were there, isn't they? In fact, they are there. That is the look that I went for. I just had the front bumpers added, but that looks really nice on its own. And then we had the vintage splitter down the bottom right there. And also we had in the next set of fenders, we had the straight splitter. We had the Gratchan splitter, which we definitely need to get rid of that bumper for. 
and the race splitter that also has the same thing. We need to get rid of that front bumper, which works on the street bumper right there. Although we do get a bit of... Oh, that's not going to work. Maybe the safari and ball bars? Yeah, that's the only bumper set we can get that actually works with those because everything else just sort of doesn't fit in. Interesting. Okay, so the safari ball bars is the only way we can get that one to work. And actually, it might be the same story for the Gratchan. So we have that there. It sort of works, but that splitter sort of doesn't really work with the extra street bumper that it's adding. Uh, there was no option to get rid of the bumper unless I've broken something. But yeah, there we go. The only way you can get that to really work is on the safari ball bars, but then it adds the huge splitter that makes the ball bars look weird. So yeah, not entirely. I feel like I've missed something. I feel like I've missed a way to get rid of that bumper. But alas, I get rid of the front plate, but no front bumper. Rightio. Okay, let's get on with this build. I want to make this a safari rally car look. And here we are with build number one. This is the rally inspired and it's Requiem Z. So what I've done here is, well, as you can see, the ball bars and this bar is a different color. That is because they are the secondary color. So I've gone for a matte secondary and a racing green primary with this old Safari Rally livery. I've gone for some off-road wheels and I've also, as you can tell, jacked up the suspension and just made the tires poke out just a little bit. Not too crazy. Did do that with v Stancer, just made it all nice and jacked up. I've gone for the rally bars, I've got rid of the bumpers, I've kept the stock grill, I've gone for these extra added fog lights on the top, and also I've gone for these hood pins as well. And then on the back, I went for the louvers because why not, and I went for just, you know, I just went for the big uh, spoiler again. I'm not entirely sold on the spoiler, but I, I felt like it might actually have some practical use, so um, as it's supposed to be some sort of rally car, I decided to keep it. And I went for the sturdy rear bumper, and I just went for the nice, simple twin exhaust on that one again. And, of course, I also went for a uh, nice chrome roll cage. So that's that second build done. Sadly, we can't turn these fog lights on or use them or anything. They are just covered up always, but still looks really cool. So I'm going to plug that one up right there. And now let's move on then to the ratty sort of... I'm going to make this like the ratty stance, um, crazy-looking one, so... I don't know. Let's give it a try. Okay, so here we are with the third build done. This is supposed to be like a stanced out ratty sort of look. I had a few problems with this one. I mean, I couldn't go for the ducktail spoiler because I couldn't get the rusty texture to appear on that. Same goes for the Gratchan sort of like oil caller looks on the front. Couldn't really go for those because of the textures, and I'm not entirely sold on the texture. We can actually just swap this texture out and this paint, and it would probably just look great. So let's just go to menus, customs, and let's just go straight away and just set it back to stock livery. You, you can tell me in the comment section below whether you think that is better or worse, but there we go. And then I also went for this awesome retro style grill on the front. Then I went for these huge wide arches, which also had the one that carried through to the front, nice big front splitter. And I went for these wheels in gold and stanced the car out and of course we also had the uh, subway handle right there so there is the sort of stancy looking build I'm just gonna go ahead and reverse that and I'm gonna do one last one nice and simple just a nice simple classic version like I would perhaps own in real life let's give it a go Here we are with the fourth build. This is a very simple one. I've gone for the custom style grill. I went for the nice sturdy bumpers and then we also had this nice little splitter here. Went for the same on the rear as well. Also went for these twin shotgun exhausts because uh, I just thought it was a really nice classic look. And then we also have these on the rear, the nice louvers. And as for the wheels, I couldn't really get the exact wheels that I had in mind. This was sort of the closest. I wanted to just go for just a nice thick wall but a real cool classic style wheel look going. No sort of stance, no crazy lowering here. Just a nice, usable, collectible, classic car. And I also went for this nice, I think it's a sunset red. It's just a really cool 80s color. Or, well, actually a really cool 70s color, actually. And I think it suits the car perfectly. 
So that is all four builds right there. Let's just park these up and have a look. So let me know in the comment section below which one you prefer. Maybe it's the race car build. Oh, I had to re actually respawn this in. You might have noticed this disappeared for a section of video. That's why the wheels are sort of sticking in again. But uh, as it was before, or maybe you like the stance version. Maybe you like the cool lifted rally version. Or maybe you just like the nice, simple, sleek classic look you can let me know in the comment section below maybe you'd have tuned yours differently you can actually just send me pictures of yours that you've made on twitter at figure eight you can find my twitter in the description below but that is it you can check this mod out i'll put a link in the description below as well you can go and check this out and that is it thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all next time goodbye <laughs>